All right, here we go to example uh, eight. Okay, so this is going to be your brand new given function, all right? So let p of x be 2x plus 5. Notice that this is a linear function. And let q of x, q of x, be the square root of x minus 3. All right? What they're going to want us to find is, is some functions, some composite functions, and their domain. All right, find each of the following composite functions and their domain, all right? So the first composite function they're asking us to find is P composed with Q at X. All right, very good, guys. Let's go for it, all right? Let me do this problem with you. By definition... Uh, P composed with Q at X is equal to P of Q of X, right? Probably used to that by now. All right, so here we go. So P of, now Q of X is the square root function, uh, the square root of X minus 3. Okay? Alrighty, so then what this notation really means here is that we want to go to function p and plug in the expression, the square root of x minus 3, into function p for the input variable. So here, if I can point your attention uh, to function p up here at the top of the screen, here's your input variable right there. Replace that variable x with this radical expression, the square root of x minus 3. All right, so then that'll look like this. 2 times the square root of x minus 3, and then plus 5. Now, um, this is as far as you can go, to be honest. I mean, this is the uh, function that we found. You cannot distribute the 2 inside the radical. You can never do that. Um, you cannot add the 2 and the 5 together because they are not like terms. 5 is a constant term, and 2 is being multiplied by this radical. So really, um, fight any temptation to, to kind of simplify this. Um, you are done. Now, let's talk about its domain, shall we? Um, now, the only thing, um, I, I, I really want you to look at function p, uh, the original function p. It's a linear function, so the domain is all real numbers. Um, Q, however, is a square root function, so we have to be careful about what we plug in for X here. So let me move the screen up a little bit here. Uh, about right there would be good. So as far as its domain is concerned, um, when you look at this square root um, expression, the square root of X minus 3, let me rewrite it right here, the square root of X minus 3, we want to make sure that the radicand now, the radicand is just the expression that's underneath the radical. We want to make sure that that radicand remains positive. Why? Well, if the radicand becomes negative, then you're going to have the square root of a negative number, which would give you imaginary solutions, right? So in order to stay in the real number plane and to get real number outputs, we want to make sure that x minus 3, that expression, is greater than or equal to 0. All right, and this is to avoid imaginary solutions. All right, let me add that to our notes for us. All right, I added this note for us. Um, to avoid imaginary solutions, the radicand, uh, which again, uh, the radicand is just the expression underneath the square root, must be greater than or equal to zero. So that's why you see me setting it greater than or equal to zero here. And now I'm just going to solve for x by adding three to both sides of this inequality. So add 3 there, add 3 there, and then you get this expression that x must be greater than or equal to 3. x must be greater than or equal to 3. So the domain for this function that you and I found uh, can be any real number as long as it's greater than or equal to 3. Any real number as long as it's greater than or equal to 3. Okay, so that means bracket at 3. Again, a bracket at 3 means that we are including 3. In the domain. If you were to put a parenthesis at 3, that would be excluding 3, but we can actually include 3, and then you want to plug in any number greater than or equal to 3. So that means we're going to go toward the right on the x-axis. 
all the way to positive infinity. Remember that you always put a parenthesis on positive infinity um, or negative infinity uh, because they are not real numbers, so you cannot contain them. So here is your domain for this function, all right? So you want to do something similar to this whenever you have a square root involved in your function. Cool. All right, guys, let's do another example. Um, this is actually still example 8 with p of x equal to 2x plus 5, linear function whose domain is all real numbers. You got q of x here, the square root of x minus 3 whose domain is any real number greater than or equal to 3. All right, we're going to find a brand new function, a composite function, and this time around it'll be q composed with p um, at x. q composed with p at x. All right, very good. Um, I don't know, you may want to pause this video and try this out on your own um, using the previous example as kind of like a guide. All right, so go ahead and... Um, Pause the video and give this a shot. All right, we're back, um, and let's see how you did. So Q composed with P at X, by definition, is Q of P of X. All right, very good. That's the first thing we should write. All right, so this is equal to, uh, so we want what we want to do here is, uh, let's see, we got Q. Uh, of, now p of x is the linear function 2x plus 5, all right? So really, this notation is, is suggesting for us um, to input 2x plus 5 into function q. Now, um, let me see if I can highlight. Um, for function q, your input variable is right there, right, underneath the square root. So we're replacing that input variable that you that I've highlighted with the expression uh, 2x plus 5, okay? So it'll look like this. The square root of 2x plus 5, and let's not forget, minus 3, okay? All right, so what we have now is the square root of and combine like terms here, uh, 5 minus 3 is positive 2. So here is our function. This is our function. It's a square root function, a square root function, the square root of 2x plus 2. All right, good job, you guys. Now, what I would like for you to consider is, what is the domain of this function that we just found? All right, cool. Let's talk about it. Now, the domain... Um, of this square root function, in order to have real number outputs, we have to be careful about what we plug in for x. Now, the same kind of conversation that we had a few minutes ago, to avoid imaginary solutions, we have to make sure that the radicand, the expression underneath the radical, um, must be greater than or equal to zero, right? So now what you see me doing is solving for x, we're solving for x because the question is, what is the domain? And the domain, by definition, is a set of your x values. So when I, sub when I subtract uh, 2 from both sides, I get 2x is greater than or equal to negative 2. What I want to do next is divide both sides by uh, 2, like this. And um, what I get here as a result is um, I get, now if I could just kind of say come up here, um, I get x is greater than or equal to negative 1. All right, very good. So then this is your domain. Of course, this is not an interval notation, but um, I'll write that out for us right now. So interval notation, uh, again, we want to, in, in words, maybe this will be helpful. In words, we're saying that the domain for this composite function is any real number as long as it's greater than or equal to negative 1. Greater than or equal to negative 1. So in interval notation, it'll be from negative 1, inclusive, all the way to positive infinity. Good job, you guys.